presence tonight, a time to dig deep into God's word in Bible study, a time to be blessed, a time to be refreshed, and a time to receive fresh understanding for a glorious tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. I welcome you to today's online digging deep service. Amen. And today as you join in, God will locate you and perform a lasting miracle in your destiny. There shall be an encounter for you today that will wipe away all your tears of sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. God's light will shine bright in your life and your destiny and you will be satisfied. Amen. Lacking nothing good in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we are moving to part four of the series, God's Light and Your Destiny. God's Light and Your Destiny. And the text we're going to use for today's ministration is from 2 Samuel chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 6 to 12. 2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 6 to 12. The Bible says, And when they came to Nacom's threshing floor, Uzzah, put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak 
against Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. Verse 9. David was afraid of the Lord that day and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord within into the city of David. But David took it outside into the house of Obedido, the Gittites. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obedido, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obedido and all his household. Verse 12. Now it was told the king, saying, The Lord had blessed the house of Obedido and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedido to the city of David with gladness. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, you are the light of the world. Please shine bright in all our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let our lives receive a touch from you even tonight that will cause us to be the very best in the mighty name of Jesus. Take all the glory, O Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise, praise, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So tonight we move straight away to part four of the series. Amen. We just have one more week and we'll wrap up on this series. Now, before we go into what God has for us tonight, let's quickly, or let me quickly do a recap of what we've learned so far. So we tried to do an expose on the meaning of God's light. And we said, number one, God's light illuminates and chases out darkness. Number two, God's light is a revealer. Number three, God's light brings about progress and growth. Number four, God's light gives energy. Number five, God's light exposes wickedness and evil. Number six, God's light brings speed. Amen. Number seven, God's light is truth and wisdom. And number eight, God's light gives direction. This is what we discussed in part one. We continued by describing what destiny means. Because remember, we're looking at God's light and your destiny. So we try to describe what destiny means and we say that it's derived from the word destination. And in every man's life, one is striving to arrive at a destination. We said destiny is something that is to happen or has already happened to a person or even a thing. Amen. And we said destiny comes from the word destination and it is a predetermined cause of event that is structured to happen in the life of a person praise the mighty name of the lord said your destiny has to do with your destination in life how you want to arrive there and the things that you need to do to arrive safely so you can also change your destination in life owing to something that is better amen and we concluded by adding that putting god's light which is the, the whole cross of the whole matter, putting God's light and a man's destiny together will produce a glorious outcome. And that's all we've been trying to achieve, bringing the light of God and putting it into a man's destiny so that the outcome will be glorious. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. We also took a look, amen, at the destiny of many people and highlighted that many are walking in darkness. And we said it's evident when a few of these things happen. Number one, too many errors are mistake. So the things that we happen or the things that you can find in a life that is working or in a destiny that's working in error. Number one, we said too many mistakes and errors. Number two, no clear vision. Number three, they are easily enticed and deceived. Number four, they become men pleasers rather than God pleasers. Number five, they lack wisdom. And they also lack understanding. And number six, there's a lot of frustration. And number seven, there's a preference to do evil. So you find this when a person's life is working in darkness or the destiny is engulfed in darkness. We also touch on a few things that will happen when God's light illuminates a man's destiny. We say number one, there will be clarity of vision. Number two, there will be divine guardians. 
Number three, confusion and frustration will be eliminated. Number four, all things will work for your good. And we concluded by saying, God's light should, you know, you should do the following to attract God's light. Number one, you must acknowledge and submit to God's will. Number two, you must get closer to God in prayers and meditation of his word. And number three, you need to be consistent in seeking his face over your destiny. Praise the name of God. That's how we've gone so far. Last week as well, we looked at the sub theme, God's light is a revealer. Amen. We looked at how God's light becomes a revealer. And we said that God's light will reveal in your destiny certain things. Number one, it will reveal all the errors. Number two, it will reveal knowledge. Amen. In your life, in your, in your destiny. Number three, you become attractive. Amen. You become a role model. Number four, it will cause God's plan and purpose to manifest when the light of God is revealed. Number five, secret things will be revealed. Amen. Whether it is negative, it will be revealed so that you can make corrections. Amen. If it's positive, it will be revealed so that you can ensure that it is harnessed and it manifests. And number six, you said your greatness will be revealed. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, in part four tonight, all that we're going to be considering is a practical example of God's light in the life of a man. In other words, God's light can positively, positively transform a destiny, even if that destiny is, uh, is, uh, appears to be doomed. So what we're going to look at tonight is a practical example of how a life is transformed when that when that life when that life is revealed or is connected to the destiny or to the light of God. I take it again. We're going to look at practicality of how a man's life or a man's destiny is positively transformed when the light of God is revealed into it. I will look at the scripture in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6 to 12. Amen. From our anchor text, we find a man called Obedido, who people considered as a nobody. And he was chosen to host the ark of God, which was greatly feared. Amen. That it can easily kill anyone who comes too close to it. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Now, I will just take you on a very short journey. Now, the ark of God was captured during a failed war. And it was hosted in the camp of the enemy. Right in the camp of the enemy, they put the ark of God in their shrine. Amen. And, you know, the name of their God was Dagon. So they put the ark of God right there. And they found out that, long story short, their God, the head was cut off, the arms and the limbs, and they bowed down to the ark of God. So the people, they were wise. They knew that this ark of God of the children of Israel was powerful. Amen. So they quickly returned it. Come and take away your ark. For it has, you know, cut the head and the arms and the limbs of the image of the God that they were serving. They released it back to, to, to Israel and on its way back, Uzzah, you know, just out of, you know, let me say, excitement of, or trying to help, they found out that the, the, um, the what do you call it now, the um, trolley or the thing that was moving the ark of God was unstable and it was as if it was about to fall. So Uzzah ran quickly to support the ark not to fall. And right there and there, God's anger arose against Uzzah and struck him dead. And everybody was afraid. That was the reason why they, they feared the ark of God. And David was asking in his mind, how can I bring this thing that can easily kill? Where it was in the camp of the enemy, it had destroyed their, 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 their image of a sin. On his way to us, 
it has killed Uzal. I can't bring this thing to the city of David. It's not going to come to my palace. Let us put it in the house of Obedidon. Someone who they thought was inconsequential. Even if he died, nobody would really cry because he was a nobody. And they put the ark in the house of Obedidon. When God's light came in contact with Obedidon, everything changed. Because when God's light came in contact with a man, there will be a supernatural positive transformation that cannot be ignored, it cannot be discounted, and it cannot be denied. And this was exactly what happened in the life of Obedidon. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what your words is or what people say about you. What matters is let the light shine in your destiny and everything else will begin to work together for your greatness. Obedidon was basically considered a nobody by all standards. And if the ark had killed him and his household, there will be no consequence. Nobody will cry. Amen? But that was not the case. God's presence was carried in the ark of God and the light of God is carried in the presence of God. Psalm 56 verse 13 Psalm 56 verse 13 it says, For you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. Obadina was forgotten, worthless, inconsequential, at least in the eyes of the people. But everything changed when the ark of God carrying God's light illuminated his household. This is a very clean example of how God's light can drastically transform one destiny. So I'm praying that in your life, that the light of God will come in, it will shine, and your destiny will be transformed positively in the mighty name of Jesus. So quickly, how can or what can happen when a man experiences God's light? So I'm just going to look at it practically. We've discussed it already. Amen. By, by next week, by the grace of God, when we are summarizing, we'll look at a few things and we'll summarize. But practically speaking, that's what we're trying to do tonight. What can happen when a man, of course, a woman, experiences God's light? Number one, like we already know, darkness will disappear and you become and you have a clear direction. Darkness will disappear and you have a clear direction. One of the first things that will happen, amen, or the first things we experience when God's light shines in your destiny is that darkness and all is associated evil. You know, the things that go with darkness, you know, poverty, sorrow, sickness, failure and death, they will give way for light to come. And when light comes, you will have clarity and you will have direction. Psalm 37 verses 23 and 24. Psalm 37 verse 23 and 24. It says the steps of a man are established by the Lord. When he delights in his ways, though he may fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. Obedidom experienced direction on account of the presence of the ark of God in his house. All of a sudden, he knew what to do. He knew when to do it. He knew how to do it. And beloved, that is what brought about his prosperity. That's what brought about his blessing. You know, when blessing comes, blessings of the Lord come, all of a sudden you wake up and you see money in your account. Like people say, miracle alert. All those, God does not work that way. He will give you a direction. You are going to meet help us. Things will come on your path that will propel you from small to big, from little to great. And that will be the blessing that God will do for you. That's what Obedinam experienced. Praise the name of God. What can happen when a man experiences God's life? Quickly, number two, God will establish his glory in your life. We've discussed it before, but we're looking at it practically from the scripture. 
The one who experiences God's light will also enjoy God's glory. Because God's light carries His presence, it carries His glory. So when God's light shines in your destiny, just know that you are going to also experience the presence of God and also the glory of God. David and his people may have been expecting to hear bad news from the house of Obedido, but the reverse was the case. Why? Because the ark of God came to the house of Obedido, it came with God's presence, and God's glory follows his presence. So that was why there was a manifestation. A drastic change, unbelievable change happened in the life of Obedido. Saul is another example. Saul, on his way to Damascus, encountered God's light. And from that moment onward, God established his glory in the life of Saul. And he became Paul. And he became the greatest apostle in the scripture. Why? Because of a simple encounter. One encounter of the light of God on the way to, to Damascus. Acts chapter 9, verses 3 to 9. Acts 9, 3 to 9. The woman with the issue of blood has spent all that she had searching for healing for her ailment for 12 good years to no avail. But she encountered Jesus all in one touch, only one touch, and her sickness ceased instantly. Why? Because she encountered the presence of Jesus. The, um, the light of Jesus and of course the glory was there. Acts chapter 5, Mark chapter 5 verse 25 to 34. Peter, Simon Peter, he also encountered Jesus at the boat when Jesus had finished using his boat. Amen? And his life experienced complete and total victory. Amen? Because he moved from a fisherman that was poor, that couldn't catch, amen, that labored for nothing, nothing to show for his hard work, and he moved to become a fisher of men. And upon Peter, the rock, the church was built. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. One encounter. Once you encounter the light of God, there will be a drastic transformation, and you will be established in the glory of God. The glory of the glory of God will be established in your life. Obedito also experienced a complete transformation. And his own was just in three months. In three months. In three months. And God's light, amen, from his presence, released his glory into the life of Obedito. What else can happen when you experience the light of God? Number four. Practically speaking, you will become relevant. That's sorry, number three now. You become relevant. You become relevant. Amen. When you study the story of Obedido, he was previously a nobody in town. But due to God's presence in the ark of God, he prospered so much that people began to talk about him. He was so relevant that even his story got to the uh, palace. It got to the king. Amen. He moved from nobody to someone of substance, someone of relevance, someone that was envied. And David was envious about him. He was envious. And he was wondering, so you mean is the act that I refuse to take to the palace that has brought this nobody to become so prosperous? He said, my friend, we are moving our act to the palace. That's when David began to make plans. To bring the ark from the house of Edom into the city of David, the palace. Praise the name of the Lord. When God's light shines in your life, you will become relevant. It doesn't matter who you are. Amen. Look at Obedidom. It was nobody. It doesn't matter your location. You will become relevant. And I pray that God's light will shine in your destiny in the name of Jesus. Look at Esther. The father of Esther, Mordecai, the same thing happened to him. His fame grew in the town 
when the light of God shone through Esther into him and all that God had used him to do. Esther chapter 9 and verse 4. It says for Mordecai, Esther 9 verse 4, Mordecai was great in the king's palace. And his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man, Mordecai, became increasingly prominent. The light of God makes you prominent. It makes you prominent. And I pray that prominence will begin to manifest even in your destiny as you experience the light of God through his presence in the name of Jesus. What else can happen? There are still some more. Number four. Everything that followed God's glorious presence, his peace, his riches, his honor, will be evident in your life. Amen? When God's presence comes, there are certain things that goes with God. It's just like when a president is moving, you must find an entourage. I'm not talking of uh, maybe an ex-president, a seven presidents. You find an entourage. It doesn't move alone. There's a motorcade. There are people, there are security guards, there's ambulance, there's the press, there are bomb squads. Everything moves with him. Amen. Because he's moving. He doesn't go. He moves with those paraphernalia. And that is the same thing. When God is coming, God's presence carries things. It carries glory. It carries honor. It carries peace. It carries riches. All those things will be evident in your life. That was what practically happened to Bedido. Because God resided in his house for three months. Because the ark was there. All those things began to come into the life of Bedido. I pray that to be your story as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, number five. What else can happen? Number five. You will become a point of contact for others to be blessed. I repeat it again. You become a point of contact through which others will be blessed. When Obedidon received all the goodies from God, due to his, you know, due to God's presence that was in his household or in his house, Amen. The light of God shone in Obedidon's life. The Bible says that God blessed Obedidon and his household. In other words, his household received God's blessing because of Obedidon. Obedidon became a point of contact for their own blessing. So when God's light shines in your life, it's not only you will be blessed. Because of you, other people will receive the blessings of God. You become a channel of God's blessing. When God bless you, no, let's take another example. Let's look at Peter, for example. As soon as Peter encountered Jesus and Jesus told him to launch out into the day, throw your nets during the day. And you know, you know, we know what he said. He was trying to say, Oh, this is the wrong time. But he did it in any case. What happened to Peter? He caught so much fishes. So much. He began to pull his nets. He beckoned for help. They were he got him to pull for him. He beckoned for a second boat because his boat was not enough to receive the blessing. In other words, because of the blessing that Jesus gave to Peter, all that people they enjoyed from that blessing. He became a channel of blessing. He filled his boat and he filled other people's boats. Can you can you see that? It's the same thing that happened to Benidon. He was blessed, and through him, his household was blessed. You become a channel of blessing when the light of God shines in your destiny. So, you know, practically speaking, every one of us will need to become channels of blessing once the light of God shines in your destiny. The blessing will be too much for only you to finish it up. You cannot consume it. It will be too much for one person. And you become a channel of God's blessing. That will be your story in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number six, what else can happen? Practically speaking, amen, using Obedidom, you know, by using him tonight as a case study. Number six, all lost glory will be restored. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. When the light of God shines into the destiny of the man, 
and of course the woman, all lost glory will be restored. One of the things that many people suffer in the journey of their lives is that they experience various types of losses. Whether it be losses on account of errors that you have made or on account of the works of the enemy, whether it's in your family, in your business, or wherever it may be. Amen? Whatever the case may be, losses are losses. Whether it's by your error, whether it's the work of the, of the devil, whether it's the error from your father's house or your mother's house or whatever, or your whatever, whatever losses, you are the one that experiences loss. And loss is loss. Amen? But when the light of God comes into your destiny, all those losses will be restored. You will get them, you will get them back. Amen? You will get them back. Who knows what Obedidum had lost? To the extent that you, in the whole town, it was the one that they chose. They put it in there. This thing is a killer. Put it there. He kills him of no consequence. Because he had lost so much that he became inconsequential, worthless, and a nobody. But when God's light shone in his life, he restored everything back. Only God knows the original plan that Obedidom had or God had for Obedidom at the time of his birth. But the good thing about this story is that he got a complete dose of restoration in three months. In three months. And his blessings spread about the whole town and it was the top of the town. All lost glory will be restored. Praise the name of the Lord. Number seven, very quickly. What else can happen in the, in the life of a man practically? When the light of God comes, you will enjoy tremendous speed. Amen? If you remember when we were starting this series in, in part one, we talked about the light of God when we were trying to do an expose on what's the meaning of God's light. We said that God's light grants you speed. Amen? And that is part of what you enjoy when the light of God comes into your life. The one who has a manifestation of God's light in his destiny, he will enjoy tremendous speed. When God's light shines in your destiny, the speed at which you attain success is beyond human understanding. Take, for example, Saul encountered the light of God on his way to Damascus. Instantly, he became, a, he became an apostle. People, in fact, they were even resisting him. Say, how can that be? How can that be? Because the speed that comes to the light of God is beyond human understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. The same thing that happened to Peter. Instantly, overnight, he was a fisherman, not able to perform. In the morning, he became a fisher of men. If you read that scripture in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, they said they abandoned everything. He abandoned the fishing and began to follow Jesus. Instantly, the speed at which he transformed from an irrelevant fisherman to a relevant apostle and a disciple of Jesus Christ. Obedido is the same thing. He encountered God's speed in three months and he became the envy of the whole town. I pray that that tremendous speed that will take you to the very top, God's light will bring it into your destiny and you will become relevant, wealthy, prominent, and full of God's glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And number eight, very quickly, you enjoy progress and growth. And that's part of what we said that the light of God does when we looked at part one. You can go back and look at it in part one. You enjoy progress and growth. This is basically an outcome of God's blessing in the life of any man. You begin to enjoy his blessing. There will be no sorrow. Rather, you enjoy progress and there will be an evidence of growth in your life. Why? Because God will establish his mandates of fruitfulness in your destiny. When God comes in, everything that God had planned, you know, remember Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 
he said it there that he has made us, you know, to become fruitful, to be, to you know, to have dominion, and that will be established when the man, when the light of God comes into your life. The original mandate of fruitfulness will be established in your life. So, in conclusion, beloved, God's light is what we all need to 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 attract. Amen. We all need God's light to come into our lives. We must attract the light of God into our destiny so that our destiny will be glorious. It does not matter how far back your life may be. Amen. How it is at the moment. What matters is how earnestly you can attract God's light into your destiny. We have already talked about how God's light can, you know, how we can attract it in part two. Remember we said that you must acknowledge and submit to God's will. You must get closer to God in prayers and meditation of His Word. And you must be consistent in seeking His face over your destiny. So I pray that we all humble ourselves and submit to God's will so that we can indeed attract God's light into our destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. One of God's will is that he wants everyone to be saved and come unto repentance. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is you know is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So, beloved, I make a call to all those who have not yet answered the call of repentance and accept and embrace the light of God that can transform the destiny of a man. Today, tonight, is your opportunity. Accept him. Let him come in and let there be a transformation in your life. If you will say these prayers with me, believing with all your heart, then you would have done so. Just say, Father, I'm sorry for my sins. Wash me clean in your blood. Please forgive me for all my iniquities and write my name in the book of life. Let all my sins be washed away and let my life begin to attract your glorious destiny so that everything concerning me will be glorious in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Quickly, we'll wrap up with prayers tonight. Amen. And I'm praying that God will cause your light to shine. And his light will locate your destiny. So that your destiny will be glorious in the name of Jesus. Join me as we wrap up with prayers tonight. Father, thank you for another glorious and refreshing time in your presence tonight. Please make all our blessings permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, please let there be a performance of all that needs to happen for your light to shine in all our destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, we are praying that your awesome light will positively transform our destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us all become relevant, great, and prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us all, let all things work out in our favor and bring us to a place of glory in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, let our light begin to shine. Let it shine, let it shine bright. Let us be like a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden, so that our lives will show forth your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for being a part of the ministration tonight. You shall experience God's glorious light in your destiny and you shall be counted among the blessed in the name of Jesus. My beloved brethren, please, I encourage you to be a brother's keeper by sharing this broadcast so that others will listen and also be blessed. Thank you for being a part of the ministration. God bless you real good and have a glorious evening. Shalom.